Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. you with the button welcome to the hot hustle podcast my hype this is episode 143 you follow me on instagram and twitter and i am hype this h-y-m-p-e is hype it's not hype i'm not geeked up reoccurring guests in the building you still special though reintroduce yourself to the audience hey guys it's your girl sunny d um gft radio network i'm all up and through there my show is unreservedly us and sex with sunny and you want to leave out the blog Website. Oh, you won't leave all that. Uh, oh, my blog is unreservedlyme.com. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm everywhere. Y'all can find me. If if you already following hype, you 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 should be following me. And if you're not, you're unproductive, and I don't respect you. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, episode 143. <laughs> I told y'all I was working on this series for a minute. This is the about. This is another episode of the autism series. Um, full disclosure, I didn't mention. I forgot to mention this on the first one with Tone. Shouts out to Tone. My sister, my sister really put me on heavily uh, a lot about these situations. Um, been trying to line up with her, her, but, you know, life be life and shouts out to my niche. Um, still trying to make it happen with her. But like I said, these stories are all different. So one story is not the same as the other. You might have some similarities in these situations, but everybody's kids is different ages and different people, different personalities. So now we're here to talk to Sunny about her situation. With her son, Sonny, the floor is yours. So you give us the background. That, give us, give us the you give us the you give us the background, and then I'll lead you down the path with the situation. Okay, so my son Xavier is eleven. Um, he is nonverbal autistic. Um, it was nonverbal level two autistic. Um, I I, I did listen to the the show with Tone yesterday. And um, the difference, slight difference with me was my son was talking. He started potty training at the age he should have had have been. Like he was doing all the things that he should have done on schedule, right? And then, like I, I said it on numerous shows that um, he he sort of regressed. So stuff that he was doing that I, he wasn't doing anymore. Like he was holding the fork, feeding himself. Like when he was younger, taking food off my plate all the time. He was a food snatcher. And stuff like that, but like, and then you know, talking, he was saying my name, his sister's name was a, was a little bit hard, um, you know, and acknowledging people and like my mom and stuff like that in the family. So where I went to his daycare, and we were that was the day that that was the week that all the parents were taking turns reading to the kids, and I, you know, I go there, I read to the kids, and I'm just watching him, and I realized that you know that there's a difference in my child and all the other kids, and I kind of kept to myself and like just was watching, just like observing him. And seeing the difference of the big difference with him and the kids, just how he was socially, right? So, um, and then when people would call him, he wouldn't um, answer to his name. If they were talking to him, the minimal eye contact, just different things, right? And he always was a toe walker when he first started walking. So that didn't red flag me, you know, it's whatever. Like, I didn't understand that that was one of the, one of the things that can identify of, with the plethora of things. That's one of the things that kind of stands out with with autistic um kids, right? But some, not all. But um, so explain that one to us, though. You said toe, toe walker, walking? because again, so these really is the walk. things. Hold up, because these is the type of things that like you just said. Me paying attention to my son in a classroom setting when I can see him around, let's just say eight, ten other kids, and it's yeah. like, hmm, something's different here. Most people will just act like, oh, no, ain't nothing wrong with my kid or my kid is just acting out. Like I said that on the episode with Tone, you'll demean this child for years about they just bad. They just don't listen and they just yeah. got a nasty disposition when something's wrong and you're just not paying attention to the signs. So something like you said, a toe, toe walking is yeah. a sign so, that you should check into. But explain what that is to everybody. So what it is is so um our most autistic, well, autistic kids have sensory issues, right? So you know how people normally walk with their feet planted on the ground? A toe walking kid is walking on their tippy toes. So they don't, they're they're walking on their toes, on the top, on the tippy of their toes. So they're like kind of walking with their feet standing up. So they're not really placing their foot flat on the ground. 
mm-hmm. and if you watch them, um, and if you see it, like, um, it's crazy because a, a lot of people that play football, stuff like that, like they 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 do that, or you know, do run track. That's you see them do that, and you don't think anything of it. Not saying all of them are artistic or artistic or anything like that, whatever. But that's one of the like it's it's one of the the, the like the um what is it called? I, I don't want to say ingredients. I'm kind of thinking the word, but like one of the I don't want to say symptoms. It's one of the Preach. things that kind of identifies autistic kids. That's one of that's just one of the things. So him him not it's it's but it's but it's for them it's a sensory issue. They don't they don't want put their feet down for different sensory for different. Or because it's a, it's a sensory, it's, they don't like it for whatever reason. It's so uncomfortable, yeah. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. So, so like my my son, if you see him walking and you pay attention to him, you see that he's walking always, almost always on his toes. Like he'll walk normally after a while, but like you'll see him mostly tip, like kind of like tiptoeing constantly, like that. So um, that was one of the things. And then um, the the non eye contact when you're talking to them. And they don't give eye contact, or you'll call their name obsessively, and they don't answer. And to Tone's point, you, you it, um, so what happened? Like af- after that encounter at his school, I talked to his doctor, and his doctor was like, "We have to check his hearing because that's the first thing they say. Maybe they may be deaf. Maybe they may have water in their ears, stuff like that. So you check, you you take them to a um a, to get their ears checked, and everything. So he got his ears checked. He could hear. Um, that was he had hearing um good in both ears. So. Um, being at that appointment, the girl said to me, I think I know what it is, but I'm not, I'm just a ear person. So let me, um, in, in that same appointment, they she called upstairs where the neurologist was and made him appointment. Like she didn't even let me call. She was like, no, I'm, I'm gonna try to get her to get you an appointment. If I call it, it'll be quicker. So she called, I had it like when I, when she, I tell you this girl called them, I had an appointment the next day. So I go to the, That's um, the neurologist. Yeah, she was not playing. It was a um black girl. I appreciate her. I don't know her name offhand. It was so long ago, but like she um called up there. I I met um talked to the doctor. They gave me an appointment the next day in the afternoon. So of course I brought him back to the same hospital um to hospital out here, and um we went to this appointment. Now this um neurologist specializes with with children specifically. She does specialize with autism and, and a couple other developmental delays, but she she also is like a general neurologist, but she does you know, the added special seeds, right? So we, we go to this appointment, it's two hours long. This lady did not talk to me, but for, for, I believe, 15 to 30 minutes. The rest of it was all with my son, playing with my son. She, he played with him for like the ha- the hour and a half. And then she sat down to talk to me for that, for that last couple of minutes. And still while playing with him and was like doing like a checklist and asking me stuff outside of what she observed. And she said to me, you know, okay, so the diagnosis is autism. And I know that, you know, that may be hard to hear. And she said, I know by, how old, my reaction. How old was he? He was going into three. That's what it, that's, it kind of matches where I'm um, telling this. Because cause that's where I think it, if you could diagnose it early, that'd be great. But I think in that area, it's kind of like you start to see their development thing. Because de- at that point, they're, they're, they're learning potty training, probably one to two. They're, they're talking a little bit more, you know, stuff like that. So. You get to see more of their development in the in the one or two going into three era, right? And he, they have expectations that it should be at, at age three, and he wasn't at all expectations. Um, so she explained to me that he was um autistic. She gave me the level um nonverbal level two, which is high functioning. So on some autistic kids, you don't really autism doesn't really have a face, right? So you could look at a kid and not and not realize he has autism. Like if you met my son, you would not know he has he's autistic unless you try to hold a conversation with him and he's not even paying attention to you, haven't heard you, haven't cared about you standing there trying to talk to him all season. You may or may not get a hello type of thing, right? So um he's he been did known tell to me bom- he's been known to bomb on the Monday show. <laughs> you already know. If y'all if y'all watch the Monday show, he's there um a couple times. He's like a guest a, a, a special guest host sometimes. <laughs> but host, um yeah. you'll hear him before you see him. But she did tell me because at that point he was not really talking, right? But he had been. So I was used to him talking, and now he's just not. So um, he had um, let's let's right there. What was that like? To see your baby because do like something you said, like now between he's not like doing two it? and three. Yeah, because of like between two and three, like you're starting to get like to the all right. They can get off the couch themselves. I can send them to go get the remote. 
like they start to get a little bit of independence and then it's like yeah. okay you starting to talk a little bit you can tell me hot cold type of thing now yeah. you're just not giving me nothing what's that what was that like i think it it was hard for me because that's when he started having the, the rolling tantrums because it was like and that's what he did at school because i'm trying to communicate with you but you don't you don't understand me so now i'm frustrated and now i'm just upset so he used to throw all the toys away at daycare he used to be he he was a professional pull up artist. He used to pull up on the um on the high chairs. But like he went he would get frustrated all the time because like now this sweet kid that was quiet and, and mild and not really like mild mannered and not aggressive at all, now he's hollering upset with tantrums. And I'm talking about rolling tantrums to where you gave him like 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 you guys said, you gave him a blue cup and he wanted the green cup that he got in the house, but now he got this blue cup. He didn't want that. And that's early in the morning. So throughout the day, he's having tantrums off and on because the blue cup is not what he wanted. He wanted the green cup, but because he couldn't communicate that to you and you somehow supposed to know, he's upset mm -hmm. the entire day. And to the point where he was um, at nighttime screaming out of his sleep because, you know, we process things in our sleep. He'd been trying to tell me this all, everybody this all day. Nobody got him. So now he's, I'm, I'm knocked out sleep and I wake up to my son screaming at the top of his lungs like somebody done killed him. And I'm jumping up out of my sleep trying to calm him down, but I can't because he's mad about something that happened this morning. And that, that type of mention that you can't, it can't even be communicated to you yeah, what the he hell can't the tell issue me. even is. Yeah. Yeah. But once I give him the cup he wants, he's fine. Let me go back to sleep. And I'm up here sitting exhausted because I've been, this is now four o'clock in the morning. And now I'm realizing that he, he won the green cup. He won the green cup all day with him all day. I finally gave it to him and he's like, all right, I'm going to go to sleep. So, I mean, he ain't got nowhere to be. He ain't got nowhere to be at six thirty. You do, ain't his problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what I was dealing with. It was hard because you're talking to a, a kid that was saying "mama" to now he's not saying anything, right? Um, because he said "mama" short lived. He he was obsessed with my mom, so he said "nana." He said "mama" once and was never calling me anything except for "get get come here." And like they tell you, they told me that he probably would never talk. They said worst case scenario, he's never going to talk to you. Thankfully, like they didn't tell me he wasn't ever going to talk. They just said, worst case scenario, he'll never talk. But if you try to, if you do these, if you sign him up and get him in this process, there's there's um, places you can go. Like I got a lot of resources. They gave me a lot of resources. And I put him um, down with Children Lives Specialized, Children Specialized Hospital out here and got him OT and, um, and, um, and uh, speech therapy. So he was signing. Um, he had the PEX book, which is the picture exchange books which is problematic now because, you know, he the way he learned is if he told me what he wanted by the picture. So, like, stuff that I knew he liked, fries from McDonald's. You couldn't see the M-Arch without knowing that he wanted some fries. Certain toys that he particularly wanted. If he wanted them, if he gave me the picture, the way he learns, he's supposed to get that. So we could be walking from school and he'll rip out the fries. And it doesn't matter if I ain't got no money. I'm scrounging up change because he, um, the way he's learning is if he gives it to me, he gets it. If he communicates that to me, he gets it. So My daughter used that, to call McDonald's fries, my youngest daughter. <laughs> yeah, but that's, but like, that's how they learn. So like even certain toys he wanted to play with, he had to communicate that to me with the picture. It's called the PEX. It's called the picture exchange system. Um, ex No, picture something communication system or something like that. So that's how he learned. Like, and then it, you learn by sentences. So once you learn to give me what you want, you, you know, now you learn, I want. So you had to put in a sentence, I want fries. So if, and if, and if they do it, the reward system is to get them what they're asking for. Type okay. of thing. So that's how he learned outside of sign language. And then, All go right. ahead. All right. So this is what I, because I know you personally. Yeah. This is why I didn't want to just dive into asking you a bunch of questions that I already know the answers to. Uh, yeah. Tell me the difference, though, in having your daughter and then having your son. Like, the difference in trying to in raising those two kids. Obviously, you have a different age, different stage situation. Yeah. But so they're 11 years the apart. The different, and so that's the different sons and all of the different checkpoints, like you said, that I'm thinking that you're supposed to be hitting and all that. Talk about the difference in the two kids. So with my daughter, she, you know, girls move fast. They just out here trying to be in the world immediately, right? They just coming I out. I have all girls, here. you know that. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so 
it was um and then on top of her, for her my niece and her are a year apart so my niece is a year older than her they both born in august so they like a couple days apart like a year from each other they're like ghetto twins not really because it's my sister and me right but she had her to follow so my niece was probably training that one and my daughter Zaria was a couple a couple of a year behind her when Buddha was going to the potty my niece my daughter was going to the potty just sitting there because that that's my... what Buddha was doing so I want to do that too so that she was, was my daughter and my nephew he's six months older than her so he got off the couch I gotta get off the couch yeah so she would follow her a lot like so she she was walking in nine months earlier than my niece she was potty trained by the before the age of two um she had some accidents but by the time she stopped having accidents she was going into age three um she was talking from from the gate she 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 was I'm not your friend at two she was telling people I ain't your friend and and everything like she was she I, that's what I was used to so and it what pie train was big for me with him because she was easy right he didn't fully get pie trained till I believe age eight because how do you explain to, first of all I'm a girl his dad was not necessarily there at that moment of pie training um when he came in he when he came um because he was locked up you know we talked about that on the other show when he came home because like I said he was aware of him being autistic I sent him the same books I read, so I would explain to him certain things. So he was abreast of what was going on. But once he came out, we were still struggling to potty train him. And luckily, we got him to get him to pee standing up, right? Um, but then we had number two was hard. So we between me, thank God he was in a school that he was in. It, it was Trenton Public. Um, it was a Trenton Public school. But the teacher he had and the staff they had in that classroom were amazing. Because with us and his ABA team, which is applied behavior, something or whatever that comes out to my house that works with him with behavior and social stuff, be able to learn how to take care of stuff like that, whatever. Uh, we all got on the same page. Let's potty train him. Because who wants to deal with a bigger kid, eight years old, trying to make sure he know how to go to the bathroom by itself? I'm, I mean, I stop at diapers. I don't. And then the potty train the phase. I don't want to go further past that. But with him, I had to. So we got on the team to kind of get him pie trained. And like that for me was the biggest accomplishment other than him falling, finally saying mom last year because he hasn't said mom, but now he still affectionately calls me mommy. But it's 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 mommy, so I'm excited. <laughs> the first time you heard that mommy, what was that feeling? I didn't believe he said it. Because like, and my, it took for my cousin on the, um you know, cousin on Unreservedly podcast. Shout out to cousin. She was, she was with me at the time. And we were upstairs, and all of a sudden, all you hear is, hey. and I'm sitting there like, wait, what? And he had to say it again. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, because for me, he, he was 10. For me to hear mommy out of my son's mouth, and I haven't heard that in God since he was a baby, like just learning eight, the words. Eight, nine years, yeah. Yeah. Like, to hear some, hear your child call you mom, and he just, I I was referred to as, come on, let's go for like forever, or, and come on now he's you calling was just, me mom. You was just taking you was just taking orders. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because he he was looking at me like, come on, let's go, come on, and that's all I got. I didn't get mommy, so I was I was like super happy. I didn't even cry. I just I think I was still stuck in shock because I couldn't believe he said it to me, and then he kept saying it that day, and then you know that since died down but now when he does say it, it's money so it's okay you're close enough I'm okay. yeah, you're close enough <laughs> yeah i'm close enough so I'm, i'll accept that <laughs> as the village as the outside outside of the immediate household what is it that the village can do to help you with these situations what don't we understand about these situations how can we help with these situations I mean, I say for me, I had to learn, like, cause you know, when, like to, to tone the point, if you don't really know it, you don't really know. So you just assume all kids are bad. People don't know how to control their kids and stuff like that. And now I'm the mom at, at the restaurant and he over there stemming, stemming is where they, you know, do things in repetitive motion and they, you know, it could be something they're saying repetitively over and over again for hours. He could just be doing it or like for a long, a certain amount of time and it could be annoying to others or bothersome to other people. Um, I say to be more patient, right? Mm -hmm. To be more understanding. Because even though they can't necessarily, because like right now he can't say full sentences to anybody, you know, but 
to to be more um empathetic because at the end of the day, they can't respond to what you're saying, but they feel it, right? They're 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 like babies. They feel energy, and your energy goes off or feel like they you don't want them around. They feel that, which causes them to further go through the motions and potentially have a meltdown because they can feel your energy. Like whether you're apprehensive, nervous, scared, or just upset, they don't know how to differentiate your feelings. Those emotions, so it's yeah. fight or flight with them, which is called with which fight or flight. They more and more aggressive. It's a big scene than it needs to be. Um, or or running, they want to run out of the situation, and because they can't process their feelings, they feel in everything. So just be empathetic and less reactive, especially in a negative way. If you're not trying to help, shut up. Stop asking me, is they hungry? And I'm at a restaurant about he... to feed this dude. <laughs> like it's like when you run in, you run into niggas at the movies and they say, What you doing here? What do you think I'm doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I got I got to check myself sometimes because I be apprehensive of taking places because I be ready to fuck somebody up. Excuse my language because my baby. Like Lee, don't be looking at my baby. Like I will be ready to go off. Like look at my baby again. And then I got to realize that I can't give that energy because then, like with me too, it applies to me too. If my energy is off. He's triggered. He's going off. So I got to check myself sometimes. But I just be you know in mommy mode trying to protect my baby and make sure people ain't looking at him sideways because I be ready to pop off. But you know I can't. What is he like being an uncle? I seen you had the video the other day of him oh. pushing the pushing the baby. So I posted that for several reasons, right? Because people think because he is um he has meltdowns and he can be aggressive, which is only towards me. They think that he's out here harming people's kids or gonna harm their kids or harm my grandbaby. Like he lets her know when she he doesn't want to be bothered with her. She doesn't care. She hasn't cared all season if he wants to be bothered with her because she still wanna play with her uncle Zay. She very much loves um him, but she he also wants her to leave him alone and respect his space. But she she she's she's one. She doesn't care about mm -hmm. anybody. She, um, she cares less than he does. <laughs> yeah, so he he'll be looking at me like he'll look at me if she gets on his bed. He'll look at me and be like, "Get out!" Like telling me to get her out off of his bed because like she in my space. But he plays with her when he so chooses. Um, he plays with him whether or not he wants to play with her. So. <laughs> Eventually, he's learning to play with her because I think he's starting to understand that she don't care if he don't want to play. She wants to play. Mm -hmm. So play with me for a little time. You're going to play with me, and then I'm going to go be with my mom and my dad. But she, and I think with younger kids, especially the girls, they force themselves to play with him. And he's like, all right, man, here. Like, because it's time she had a toy. He'd take it from her because it's his toy. Like, why are you touching my stuff? And then she'll look at him, and then he'd be like this, sliding it back over to her, like, here, just, all right, for a couple minutes, you can play with it. But <laughs> like, like you said, it's it be it's the energy of them situations where he don't give a fuck, but she really don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. So, <laughs> and even I, I it's funny because he got like, the little sprinkler thing in the backyard because he knows love water, and her and her mom got into it and he got out and he came and got me. He was like, "Get out!" And they sitting there having fun, and so she don't even care because like once they get out, he's back in, and she's like. <laughs> Playing with him while he in the water. She's like, I'm still gonna play with you. He had to care. And and I think, like I said, he understands she don't care. So he like, I might as well just play with this little kid because she ain't going nowhere. But when I first when she first came home, he did not want anything to do with her. As soon as she came, as soon as she came, like when when she came, he'll look at her because he was jealous because he liked his sister. He wanted to play with her, but now you got this damn baby. And I can't play with you because you got this baby. But now that the baby's walking around moving, he like, oh, I can play with my sister. And maybe play with this baby. So <laughs> that's them like uh I that's the I was always the baby and now y'all done brought another baby into this situation. Yeah. Yeah. But like he <laughs> it's funny because he calls her Uncle Zay. Cause we cause when she like this, like she looked, look, and I'm like Uncle Zay. And so he walked up to her, he was like, Uncle Zay, and I'm like, No, you no, know, <laughs> that's your niece and you're her Uncle Zay. But like, you know. But but my sister, my not my sister, my daughter's trying to get him to look identify her as niece. But he'll get it mm -hmm. because we, we keep programming to her. Once she starts talking, that's Uncle Zay. And then to to him, that's your niece. So like he played with her, he he'll play with her for limited spurts in a moment, like, all right, let's play. And I that's why I say I think that video was something that needed to people to people to see. 
because just because he's autistic doesn't mean he can't be a good uncle. Um, when she's crying, he he don't want to be bothered with her. When he's upset, she's like, "Oh, my uncle's going off. I want to watch this." Because <laughs> when he's having meltdown, she's crying. Oh, like grandma, you see this? Like she's looking like, "Oh, my uncle is upset." <laughs> so. I think their bond is going to be strong. I think he's going to be very protective of her. And I can't wait to, I'm hopefully I'm here to see their bond go stronger because I feel like he is going to protect her. Last question. Uh, what was your proudest moment? The the thing that he did that made you the proudest was what? Um, It's funny because I was like, uh, so when he does talk, he doesn't just talk to talk. He's very intentional about what he says, and it's, it makes sense, right? So one day I was doing, I was dancing around trying to play with him, and he he wasn't beat that day. And even though it's a, it's a crazy moment, I just think I love it because I felt like I was proud because he said it when he was supposed to say it, how he was supposed to say it. So I'm like, hey, come on. And he's like, sit down. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? And he like, he looked me right in my eye with like a stern look and everything and was like, sit down. He gave you the eye so, contact you was looking I for? Sat down because gave... like, bro, you just told me to sit down. I... <laughs> he gave you the eye contact you was longing for and everything. <laughs> yeah, like, cause that's why I say it. Like when he does talk, it's purposeful. It's, it's the intent, everything. Like it's not just he's saying beans and Frank. It's like he's saying what he means how he means it in the manner like that boy looked me in my eye and was like, sit down. And I was like, what? Wait a minute. I know you just ain't tell me to. Cause like, if you ain't never hear him say it, like, who you talking to? First of all, like I'm your mom. And then he I'm looked me back in my I'm, eye. I'm like, like you heard here. me the first time. <laughs> sit down. I said, oh, okay. That's, that's the type of time we on. Copy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, before we let you go, um, Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your uh your, your parenting story. Uh okay. and let everybody know where to follow you and all of that good stuff. All right, y'all can follow me at I am Sunny underscore D, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and TikTok. All one one thing all over them platforms and unreservedly me um dot com August fourth. Podcast. Um podcast that was link last that was oh. yesterday. That was yesterday. By the time this comes out, that was yesterday. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, that's why we didn't go into any of that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can cut that out. I don't know. We don't do no editing here. You, I came from live radio. You say something, it's on there. Hi, guys. Oh. Um, well, that was it, episode. You and you, hey, we'll be doing it again. So you know saying make sure you get your tickets. And we still accept the money though. You can still send your bread in. You know saying you hit that event right, we'll still collect your money day after and all that. <laughs> um <laughs> Sonny, like I said, I appreciate you for coming on. That's episode 143. Make sure y'all do me a favor, follow at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, at Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, and at H2H Cleaning on Instagram. Sonny, thank you. You're we welcome. Are out. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.